Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna look at the series Turning X into a Fake Moon. X can be anything, musicians, TV shows and so on. So far I covered the musicians Stray Kids and D-Crunch and the show Squid Game, Stranger Things and Dead and Paranormal Park. Today I want to show you the new Netflix show Wednesday and turn two characters into a fake moon. Massive spoiler alert and also not sponsored. Wednesday is a spin-off series of the Addams Family movies about an eccentric and kinda grotesque family with a dark sense of humor. Haven't seen the movies before, but me and my friends watched one after finishing the show. However, this meant that I had zero expectations or memories of this franchise. Anyways, Wednesday's the name of the main character. She's edgy, rarely blinks or changes her mimic at all, gets visions if she touches certain stuff and has trouble staying in any regular school. Or rather, no school is able to hold her in. So she gets sent to Nevermore Academy. A school for outcasted teens, aka teens with special abilities. There are sirens, werewolves, psychics, gorgons and vampires. Her parents also went to the school and tell her that she will love it. Wednesday, however, is less than convinced. She gets to share her room with Enid, a pretty, energetic, color-loving blogger girl. The complete opposite of Wednesday. Enid is a werewolf, however, she was not able to transform yet, which led to some stress with her mother. Nevermore Academy, which is named after the poem The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe and the village Jericho with the so-called normies, aka normal people, have a lot of dark secrets and mysteries that Wednesday tries to solve or uncover. In episode 1 they establish a monster that roams around in the woods and attacks and kills random or not so random people. Also Wednesday gets accused by another student of destroying the academy in the future, so he tries to kill her. The monster and the destroying the school plot are the main vocal points of the story. Finding out who is behind the attacks and why Wednesday would destroy the school is really fun to watch. But there are a few other storylines that are also pretty interesting. I don't want to spoil too much, so I'll stop here and talk about the fake one, but there still will be spoilers in the later parts. I tried to take inspiration from the character design of Wednesday and her hobbies. I felt like a black cat would be the most fitting animal. It is said that black cats are bringers of misfortune, similar to how Wednesday was accused of destroying the school. The fur around its neck is a reference to the collar on her school uniform. And the main inspiration was her birthday present. Her parents gave her a set for conserving dead animals, which she also used later. So I added a scar on the chest and some lines under the eyes, like surgical markings. I wanted a concept that could be mirrored in the other fake one line, and it actually worked quite well. By the way, if you have a name for this fake one, please let me know because I don't have one so far. <laughs> now I wanna talk a bit more about the characters. There were six characters I liked or well at least cared for. <laughs> a few were just there and I didn't mind them, and two that I could not stand. I obviously like Wednesday, especially her sassy and often dark comments. Also her fashion sense. The dress from the prom was pretty cool, not gonna lie. I wouldn't wear it, but it looked good. My favorite scenes are probably the dancing scene. Yes, I'm basic, I know. Wednesday playing cello in front of the burning statue. Every scene with her and Eugene. And the fencing scene against Bianca. And Wednesday hugging Enid in the end. That was pretty cute. Eugene is the second character I like. He is a nerdy kid with no friends who has a beekeeping club. Wednesday joins his club. Not so voluntarily, but whatever. <laughs> and I find their relationship pretty cute. It's a big sister, little brother situation and it's really fun to watch. Also, until the last episode I did not realize that since Eugene also goes to the school he probably has some sort of powers. He can control bees, which I don't think is that useful unless you try to hurt people. Or to defend yourself. That's kinda dope. And terrifying. But it does make me wonder why he's also wearing a beekeeping suit if he can just tell the bees to, you know, be nice. Whatever. <laughs> the next character is Bianca. She is a siren and a really talented fencer. At the beginning she was portrayed rather antagonistic, but quickly got character development. Hope we can see more interaction with her Wednesday, Enid and Eugene in the second season. Bianca is a really cool character to me. First of all, she's a siren, which means she can influence other people with her voice, but apparently also with just her presence. So she never knows if people actually like her or if her ability causes them to like her. And that was an interesting character trait to me because it must make Bianca feel a bit insecure about her friends and 
like all relationships in general. The second interesting point is that her mother, also a siren, is in a cult and they use their powers to manipulate people to get, I think, money and stuff like that. It wasn't explored that much in the first season, but I hope they bring the storyline back in the next season. Next up, Principal Weems, the shape-shifting principal of the school. She does everything to protect the school and the students, even if their techniques are often questionable. Spoiler alert, she gets killed in the end. Which was so unnecessary and I was kinda sad, she gets stabbed in the neck with a needle full of poison and like, that was so dumb. They knew the other person was dangerous and experienced with poisonous plants and everything and still she let her get close to her, that was... Uh, I really wish that didn't happen. I kinda liked her, I also liked the other character at the beginning and felt bad for her but, you know, details. Um, so I should be done with drawing, let's see the results. So I tried to make the evolution as fitting as possible. First of all, I expanded the conserved animal theme by giving it parts of other animals. So I changed the tail into a bee stinger and added four yellow stripes, also like a bee. I wanted to show that while Wednesday is still herself, she adapts a tiny bit of her friends, in this case Eugene. I also gave it an element to reference Enid. Enid's birthday present to Wednesday was a really cool matching scarf that Wednesday unfortunately lost. Still heartbroken about that scene, fuck you Tyler. But yeah, I added this mane to reference the scarf and also the hug from her and Enid at the end. It's supposed to look like the mane is like hugging her. Also, I made the front parts white because that is also a reference to another character called Thing. He is a severed hand and is often seen sitting on Wednesday's shoulder. The claws are black because Wednesday likes to wear black nail polish, which is really cool. And I added some spiky whiskers mainly because the face looked empty. I also wanted the post to reflect the dance scene from the prom, but that was nearly impossible, so I just posed the one part similar to that one hand move. Um, the pattern on the chest is inspired by the window in Wednesdays and Enid's room. Let me know what you think in the comments. The other character I wanted to create a fake one out of is Enid, the sunshine of the series. Like I said, she's a werewolf, so obviously I wanted to make a werewolf fake mon, even though I already created one in my main series, so this made things a bit difficult. Anyways, Enid is the complete opposite of Wednesday, which means I could use a lot of colors, especially since she wears colorful nail polish and has dyed hair. She also has animal plushies on her bed, which was a good contrast to Wednesday's hobby of conserving animals. Basically, this fake one's a plushie and the Wednesday one is a conserved animal, if that makes sense. I don't know, I found that parallel kind of cool. Enid is friendly and does everything to befriend Wednesday. She respects Wednesday's dislike for hugs, gives her presence in her character colors and helps Wednesday with her plans. Until the breaking point in the series and it was honestly heartbreaking to watch, but I'm glad Wednesday got character development, so that hopefully doesn't happen again. By the way, in the last episode, Enid finally turns into a werewolf to save Wednesday and she is honestly the most adorable werewolf ever. Her colored hair stayed the same and it looked super cute. By the way, at the beginning of this series I had the theory that Enid is not a werewolf but a were cat. So like she can extend her nails, wolves can do that but cats can and her one club has cats as a mascot so for the canoe race they dressed up as cats and she made cat puns. But yeah, she's not a cat, she's a werewolf. Still like my theory though. Whatever. Um, however, the story about her transformation was still really interesting. She was not able to transform like the other werewolves in her age, so her mother wants her to go to wolf out camps, which was basically her telling Ina to go to conversion therapy. I can explain it very well, so here's the short Wikipedia definition. Uh, conversion therapy is the pseudo-scientific practice of attempting to change an individual's sexual orientation, gender identity or gender expression to align with heterosexual and cisgender norms. And it was so blatantly obvious that the wolf camps were a reference to conversion camps, which made a lot of people believe that Enos is a lesbian or at least lesbian coded. She also wore a sweater that looked at the lesbian flag. Up to you if you believe it or not. We will see what happens in season 2. So here it is, Enid is a fake one, a cute little stuffed werewolf. I gave it a colorful pattern around its eyes because Enid always wears fancy eye makeup. The pink and blue tufts of hair are a reference to her pink and blue hair streaks. It has colored claws like Enid's nails and a tail shaped like a pencil. 
Enon's werewolf form also has long fangs, so added those two. Also, a subscriber asked me to draw a fragment based on their name, which contains wolf and art, so here we go, this one's for you. There are a few characters missing that I wanted to talk about. First of all, Thing, the severed hand. I liked him, but why did he feel the need to play wingman for Wednesday when she clearly was not interested in romance? Like, why? She didn't need a love interest and Thing got her into so many uncomfortable situations more than once. Speaking of uncomfortable situations, I cannot stand the two love interests, Xavier and Tyler, both creepy, kinda manipulative and have little to no character, which in my opinion is inexcusable. Tyler has by far the coolest ability he can turn paintings into real life, that is my dream ability, and yet he manages to be boring. And breaks into Wednesday's room and accidentally gets Wednesday shot with an arrow and her other friends have to save her. All in all, he didn't do a lot. Not a lot of helpful stuff, there was not a lot of character death, and nah, not the biggest fan of him. No hate to the actor though. Then we have love interest number two, Tyler, who is, surprise surprise, the monster that killed all those people. No one was really surprised. He is the barista and the son of the sheriff. I also don't like him, and I find his manipul manipulative behavior towards Wednesday pretty creepy. Me and my friends literally screamed no when he uh, kissed Wednesday, it was so uncomfortable to watch. He claimed that she had sent him signals and let me tell you she did not. Like I can't tell you when someone is sending such signals but I can tell you when someone is not sending them. And there were none, not even a smile that could be misinterpreted. Absolutely nothing. Also that has nothing to do with Tyler as a character but he can transform into the monster and that looked so goofy. I guess it's supposed to look goofy, but I don't know, I can't take it really serious. Especially when he fights Werewolf Enid, who looked good enough to not stop the viewing experience. Anyways, I saw a lot of people who say they don't like Xavier and Tyler and that they have no personality besides them liking Wednesday. And well, I have to agree. Which is unfortunate because the show does have interesting characters. But back to the drawing, here's the evolution. The upper part of the body was not too hard, but the lower body was a real struggle. I tried to still convey the plushy part, but combined it with a more threatening silhouette. One arm is striking at the viewer and the other arm is showing off its claws, like Enid likes to do. Or its friendly waving, up to interpretation. The claws are again painted, the hind paws are shaped like crayons, cause I had to do something with them and just painting claws again would be boring. On the belly is a loose reference to her window side in the dorm room. Since Wednesday's birthday scarf was a matching one to Eden's scarf, I also wanted to incorporate that element into the design. I don't think it's working as well as the other design, but hey. So what do you think about the show, the video, the fake mon? Please tell me in the comments. Subscribe to the channel to not miss any future content. Also check out the fan art showcase at the end of the video, it's only like 30 seconds, but there is a lot of amazing fan art. Please like the video, share it with any fake Mono Wednesday fans. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the comments.